Okay, everybody, I'm Jim. Here in my shop, I build kitty cots. I'm a seaplane pilot. And uh, so on and so forth. Anyway, I uh, wanted to get some of my history down. People ask me every now and then, you know, how'd you get to fly seaplanes, etc. and stuff. So I'll go through the real brief stuff here. Uh, kind of from day one, I was born in Evanston, Illinois. Lived in Northfield, Illinois. My father was a minister. My mother, a minister's wife, and uh, they had four kids, and so I'm Jim. I'm, uh, there's my younger sister, Julie, my older brother, Rich, and my older sister above Rich is Lori. And uh, at that point, you know, so that was in the fourth grade, and then we went, uh, so I spent from fourth grade to seventh grade in Binghamton, and then we moved to Florida, but while in Binghamton, I learned to ski. My parents were, you know, avid skiers, so we skied there. And then we also bought property in uh, the Adirondacks, Binghamton's down lower in New York State. So uh, we bought property in the Adirondacks. My dad and mom wanted to build a summer cabin for us to grow up, you know, through the years. So we did. We built, bought property and built a cabin, rough shell cabin on uh, Long Lake, New York. And that's a small town uh, hamlet of about 900 people. So it was a very interesting time uh, Growing up there, so we did fourth, or basically fifth, sixth, and seventh grade there. Uh, in our early years, while we built our cabin, and uh, there was kind of a dualistic thing. There was the summer folks and the townies. So I was a summer kid, and you know the townies were on their own side of the block, so to speak. I mean, they actually the townies ran the whole town, and the summer kids just were, uh, you know, a dualistic kind of a thing. But anyway, uh, that's probably when I first met Scott Spengler, who I have to uh, credit most of all of my in, uh, enthusiasm for flying. That's where it comes from. And uh, he was just a kid in Long Lake who grew up there. His uh, father owned a lumber yard there, and they had four sons. And so I uh, had seen them through the you know my early years in the regattas and stuff like that, and you know summer regattas on the lake, that kind of thing. Didn't really know them very well, but that's uh, I did know who they were. Uh, who Scott was and his family and you know I knew a lot of the people in, as I grew up in town there. Anyway, uh, then we moved to uh, uh, Miami, Florida when I was in the seventh grade and I went in uh, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth grade there and in 1975 I graduated. The whole time we were in Florida, uh, I we my, meandered back and forth to uh, Long Lake all the time you know for summer so I spent a lot of time in Long Lake up in there in the summertime as I grew up you know from junior high and to senior high and uh, spent tons of time on the lake, got to know a lot of the summer people and local people, obviously, being in this as a small town. And there was seaplane flying going on on that lake. There was Helms Aero Service, and uh, there was uh, quite a few seaplanes going on. That was a, We were right on the lake there. And uh, Bill Spengler, who owned Hamilton County Lumber, where I eventually worked, uh, he had airplanes because he built uh, summer homes on the lake up there and on lakes around the Adirondacks, and he flew to the different houses that he was building to inspect them and bring them, you know, back orders, etc. So anyway, um, like I say, we had gone to Florida. Then I graduated from. Uh, I've always was, was into woodwork too during high school and stuff. So I was a real woodworker. And then in 1975, I graduated and then I migrated out to Colorado with my brother. He was going to college in Greeley, Colorado. So I went there and spent two years out there, and. Uh, did construction work, and then I was uh, I poured foundations for a company out there, and then I was uh, a manager or a night manager for uh, the Northern Hotel there, where I cleaned all of the stuff at night, uh, you know, the bars and the bathrooms and everything. So I was a janitor, and then I did uh, steam my steam clean carpets out there for a while, and did that for a bit, and then uh, I came back. Uh, let's see, I was 75, 76, 77. In 1977, my dad offered me uh, the opportunity to go back to upstate New York and remodel our cabin up there. It was not winterized, so I jumped at that, and he gave me three bucks an hour, and I got to stay for free. So that was in 1977. So I spent 77 and 78 and 79 and 80 and 81 and 82 up there fairly steady. Uh, steady meaning that I would be up there, you know, working at the... Then I eventually... Well, let's see. So I went from Colorado back to Long Lake uh, in 1977, and then I eventually got that that fall. I got a job at the lumberyard, which was Scott's father's lumberyard, uh, Scott Scott Spangler. And uh, so I worked 1977 through 1982, basically, 
uh, at the lumber yard and spending my summers and falls working in the lumber yard and at the lumber yard and all around Long Lake doing uh, you know building jobs and having a great time and that was the time when I uh, met Scott the most because I was working at his father's lumber yard and uh, they had Scott had uh, there was four boys in the family by the way there was Scott Jeff Greg and let's see there was uh, Scott Jeff Greg and Bill and um, but I hung around with Scott quite a bit because after work every day he would say hey let's go out and fly my dad's airplane so we'd go out and fly uh, the 206 or the Ronca Chief or the Champ or the 172 Hawk and he would give me the controls and I got super excited about it and then uh, you know I was just like dying to be a seaplane pilot and so then in 1983 I went back to Florida that winter and then I started my first instruction at Tamiami Airport and I had to bring out all my logbooks here uh, so I could remember what the heck I did from that point so in 1983 I started to fly and then uh, let's see I still it was, let's see, in 1983, I started to fly, yeah, and then, uh, well, what else did I do, Grant? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, and then I had a lag there, so I started in 1983, and then I flew, flew, in 1983, then I, la then I had a layoff of three years, in 1986, I took it back up in upstate New York, so then I went to, and then they got my, eventually I got my, uh, private pilot's license in 1986, I do believe, because I went right at it. And then in 1987, I moved to uh, Seattle with my girlfriend. And, you know, all the time I was from from 70, well, Scott had been out here flying for Kenmore Air and also for uh, uh, Clyde Carlson at uh, Lake Union Air. And he was always egging me on saying, come on out and fly, come on out and fly. And that was, you know, like, that's when I got my license. And then uh, like I say, in uh, 86, I started, I got my license in 86, and then, uh, oh, let's see, what have I done here, 87, <laughs> yeah, it's 87, I moved out here and spent a year out here, got my seaplane rating, and then I said to myself, I'm not going back to Seattle until I, I wanted to fly seaplanes real bad, Scott was here, and I said, I'm not going back to Seattle until I, uh, get to fly first, you know, and, either Clyde or somebody out here. And so I went back to Long Lake for 10 years. And in that time, I went back and remodeled my old house, bought another house, uh, made three apartments out of it. Um, and then I ended up mortgaging my first house that I bought. I bought a house for $11,000 in New York with a partner of mine. Then I eventually bought him out. And then I made the three apartments out of it, uh, you know, from 87, 88, 89, uh, 90. And then... Um, I ended up mortgaging my uh, house. Uh, let's see. So I got, I mortgaged my first house in 1992, I do believe. Because there it is. There's my Satabria, 7GCBC. Yeah. So in 1992, 1991. No, that was Scott's airplane right there. So uh, that's 1991. Lake Chelan, I was out doing some, oh, I did some flying with Scott in 1991, 92, uh, and then I bought my air, my first airplane I bought was a Satabria, and that was in 1992 in October, and then I had that for five years and flew the pants out of that, I got 850 hours in that thing, and so here's all, this logbook is all basically just my Satabria flying. Yep, Satabria, Satabria, 99, and then 90, let's see, it's, no, it's all 95, excuse me. Yep, 95, 95, 95, and then it goes into my other logbook. Uh, boy, I had a lot of logbooks here. 95, there's 95 again, so 511JH was my Satabria. And then I started flying four. That was ninety six. Cool. Seven GCBC five one one JH. That's ninety five still. Ninety six. There's my little plane. And then I started flying in nineteen ninety six. Oh, I was supposed to come out and fly for Clyde then in nineteen ninety six, and I was married at the time. My wife got an auto accident in ninety six and had traumatic brain injury. So then. Helms Aero Service hired me in 1996, and I flew with them. 
And then in 1990, I flew with them for, uh, yeah, summer and fall. And then in 97, I actually moved out and did fly out for Clyde. That's my first year in 1997, I do believe. Yep, 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 I have 67685 in here. Yep, that was it. 1997 was my first year that I came out. And uh, that was awesome. That was my first year flying for Clyde in Northwest Seaplanes. Now I'll continue on. Okay, I wanted to go through a little bit of this Long Lake stuff real quick because uh, there's a whole bunch of parts to it. And I'm going to build kitty cots while I'm at it. Anyway, this is my shop. I'm making kitty cots. I build cat perches. And, uh, so anyway, 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th grade up to Long Lake. I think it was the 5th grade when uh, we bought property up there and had a little camp built rough camp and then uh, the seaplane part of it was is that there was always seaplanes up there from when we were there because Helms Aero Service was right in town and operated a couple of airplanes down there all the time so it was Herb Helms and his son Tom Helms so basically our cabin was one mile from town and then uh, on a north wind day Herb and Tom would take off from town towards our camp, and then we were like right on the tape. It was just like being on a runway, basically. We were on the runway. So they would take off north. And then um, on uh, uh, when the wind was blowing out of the south, they would land straight in or base to final, uh, either right over our house and then land uh, south uh, to the town, because that's where the seaplane base was for Helms Aero Service. So there was always airplanes up there, and then uh, Herb, or uh, Bill Spangler was... North of us on the lake, his parent or uh, Bill's wife Lorraine, Lorraine's parents had a big camp on the lake north of us, and that's where Bill Spengler kept all of his seaplanes in the hangar there. So it was, I mean, we were, we were right in the middle of airplanes all the time since I was growing up, and we were boating all the time on the lake as kids, and seaplanes were buzzing, you know, all over the place. Really, it was cool. So that was my first introduction to seaplanes, and then uh, you know, through time, as time went on. Because I was there 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade, even though I did move to Florida in the 7th grade. So every summer we would go to Long Lake, which was cool. And, uh, you know, we, there was summer regattas going on on the lake up there and stuff. And it was a really tight-knit little community. It was only 900 people local in the community. And then uh, it swelled to about 3,000 with the summer people because people had camps all over the lake and stuff, all, all over the lake up there and all over the Adirondacks. So it was pretty cool. So eventually I did get to, you know, I did run into Scott Spangler, didn't really know him too well, but I knew of him as a kid. Uh, they had their boats that they kept at uh, his grandparents, like I said, where Bill kept his airplanes. Um, they had uh, Chris Craft and a Garwood, and then they had a Ronka Chief and Ronka Champ, and probably a 172 at the time, 206 I think also at that time. Um, but I didn't know them really at that time, but when I really started to get to know Scott and his family and so Scott, Jeff, Greg and Bill were the boys and then the family was when I started working in uh, the father's lumber yard, Hamilton County Lumber in 79 and then the four boys had to come back every summer and work in the lumber yard to put their time in. That was just part of the deal. But they also also had the opportunity to get their seaplane uh, or an air uh, pilot's license and a seaplane rating etc and then go through school like Scott went to flight safety in Vero Beach and but uh, that's when I really got to know Scott because he would, every day after uh, work, he would say, come on, let's go fly. So we'd jump into 206 or 172 or a chief or a champ or something. Pretty much, boy, in the summertime for a while there, it was every single day. And I actually flew the 206 and the champ, you know, right seat, of course. Actually, I was left seat a couple of times, to be honest with you. And uh, so then, uh, through the years, obviously, you know, after Scott went to, flight safety and graduated there then he wandered down to California and he was gonna his father was gonna buy him an airport at 29 Palms or they were gonna invest in an airport at 29 Palms California and he kept on wandering up uh, to California and up to Seattle and they got to Seattle and saw the seaplanes there and obviously fell in love and he was uh, quite an icon here in Seattle also Scott was so it's a fairly interesting story there I just wanted to point out that there was a lot more to the story to Long Lake and uh, 
I continued to go back there, and uh, I have my log books here. I can't remember. In uh, 1992, I bought that uh, Satabria on floats. So I flew that thing from 92 to 93, 94, 95, 96. Okay, I've gone through a lot of my log book up uh, into 95 and uh, let's see here let me do it this way here so I got into 95 and then this is still 95 this is still flying my Satabria 511 Juliet Hotel and then uh, let's see when did I start in 96 is when I started flying with Herb Helms in June so I was with Herb Helms in June getting trained and then I flew all that summer of 96 with Herb and then I'm still flying my plane around too and then we whip up into 1997 and in 1997 that's when I uh, yeah I come out to Seattle and I start flying for Clyde at Northwest Seaplanes and uh, so that was just unbelievable so all of 1997, and then I came back in the fall of 1997 and flew for Herb and Tom again at uh, Helms Aero Service. And then 1998, here we are, uh, early season flying for Herb and Tom in uh, January, February, March, April, and May. So, and then, in and then as soon as July hits, I'm back out here in Seattle. And that's uh, amazing here. So 98, yep, now I'm in Noisy. 101 Sierra Yankee. Wow. And that's 98. So I flew for Clyde all of 1998. And then 99. And let's see, I think I came, oh, then I came back in the uh, fall of 98 and flew for uh, Herb and Tom again. Uh, there's 99. Back out to Seattle. Flying 90 Yankee Charlie. Wow. Okay, and then we go into 2000. So that was all out here again. And then, uh, Let's see, yep, back in 1990, same 1999 in the fall, I'll go back and fly for Helms Aero Service again. And then 2000, I think, is when I moved out here to Seattle full time. And then uh, so I flew all summer, Yankee Charlie again, uh, tons of Yankee Charlie. And then in 2001, uh, I moved out, well, I guess it was 2001, I think I moved out here full time. Uh, I'm pretty sure. And then I'm in 67681. And then, uh, what is it here? In 2002, I bought the Cess, uh, Cessna 170B. My wife and I bought that, Wendy. Uh, Wendy, my wife. And then, uh, so then I flew the pants off of that. And then, so basically, that's 2002. And these two log books are 2002 to present. And it's all been Northwest Seaplanes flying. Uh, I had my Satabria or my uh, Cessna 170B for uh, geez, 10 years. So uh, that's gone. Uh, but now it's just Northwest Seaplanes flying, and this is what we do, so it's unbelievable. Uh, let's go! I'm going skiing.